Hello Platter Experts. In this segment, we will be heading how viewed recently screen. This feature will display recently viewed products. Implementing the error and warning dialogs. We will implement a login screen design and we will implement the sign in with Google button widget. And we will also be implementing the registration screen to our application. So let's dive into the code first. Um, we will be just uh, heading the view recently page, which we just click on this view recently. So we will be just direct redirected to a page which um, the products will be shown. So yeah, which is similar to this wish list. So we will be just copying uh, this screen and changing some titles and the rest of the code will be the same so for that i will be just moving to my this page uh, screens directory and it is in the inner screen so here in the inner screen directory i will be just creating a new dot file and this time it will be viewed recently dot dot and I will be just copying all this code from my this wishlist screen and I will just paste it here and now I will just change all the this route name basically so with it will be recently viewed screen recently viewed screen and the name which is um, wishlist so this will be also changed into recent view the screen which will be recent and recent view the screen that's it so i will just save this from here now and now we will just need to redirect to this page while we just click on recent viewed section so i will be just adding this uh, route to my main dot dot so which will be this basically so i will just copy this and i'll just name this and uh, rename this which will be recent and yeah i will just recent uh return our that class so yeah now we are just done and now we will be just moving towards our home screen uh sorry we will be just moving to our profile screen and now we just need to implement the navigator for our recently viewed screen when the button is clicked so it should just redirect to our recently uh, viewed screen and that will be done so i will be just using the recently viewed screen and the route name and i'll just cut this from now here and i'll be just saving this and i'll be just moving our into our view recently screen again and now i will just change this so yeah now i will be just changing this to our recently viewed the title basically which will be recently viewed and i will just save this and i'll be just going back to my profile page and now i'll just click on this button so we will be just redirected to this page so basically on the um, actual application when we just move to recently viewed screen so this add to cart button should be clicked and here in place of this icon uh, a tech icon should be shown but we will be just implementing that later on in the provider section part so we will be just doing there so i'll be just letting it uh, same as it is for now so we will be just doing that later on but for now we will be just moving ahead and we are done by creating our viewed recently screen and yeah that's looking good now we will be just um, moving ahead to design our login screen but first we will be just creating uh, and implementing a reusable method for displaying errors and warning dialogs so this will be our ND tool for handling various user interactions so yeah we will be just creating this reusable um, dialog and error controlling method into our this services directory so basically it will be a service uh, section so that's the reason we will be just adding it into our services 
uh, directory so yeah i will be just right clicking on the services directory and i'll be just creating a new dat file and this time it will be my application methods so yeah my app methods dot dart and here i will be just creating a new class which will be uh, class my application methods and it will be just simple so here i will be just creating a future function so uh, because we will be just getting uh, sending some kind of data into how into this method and when we just submit something so it will just process process some and take some time so that's the reason we will be just using our future function here so for that I will be just using and creating a function basically which will be the static one and it will be future and the return type will be wide so and I'll just name my function to show error or warnings dialog and yeah that's it now I will be just creating it we will be just adding the build context so we just need a build context for this so i'll be just adding that so we will be just requiring a subtitle and a function so and we will be just adding also a boolean so to just check if it is an error or not so according to that we will be just showing the error message on the screen so first thing first so we will be just doing these required things and i'll be just adding the required uh, which will be a string and which will be subtitle for us and that's it now we just need to also add a function for that basically it will be a function when it when user clicks on that so which will be required yeah great now it's the function and now i'll be just creating a boolean which will be bool is error and i'll just make it true as a default so that's it now as you know that it's a future function so we will be just using the async keyword here so here i will just make it um async and now in the inside this i will just create my show dialog so here I will be just using await and show dialog and that's it now as you see that we just need the context and the builder so for that we will be just providing the builder which will be this and now that's it now we will just implement this uh, basically which will be we will be just returning in this show dialog box we will be just returning a alert dialog so for that we just uh, need to return the alert dialog that's it so yeah now we just need to implement so what we just need to show on that uh, error messages so for that we just need to show um, how icon on the top a title and um, navigation function so yeah just uh, we will be creating that so for that we just need to use the content and inside the content now we just need to define the content what content we just need here so i will be just defining all in the column so we just need a column here so in the column section i'll be just using the children part and now i will be just um, using the image on the top which will be a uh, icon basically so i'll be just using the image dot as assets and here we will be just using the as asset manager again uh, which is a class we, we are just managing our all the assets so access manager and uh, this time it will we just need to import it so i'll be just importing it and now we just need to call our that icon which icon we just need so i just need a warning icon to show on the alert dialog box so i'll just show that 
and now I will be just defining uh, the heights uh, and the width of this images so for the height I'll be just using the height and providing 60 to it and the width I'll be just using the width property and providing the width to it so that's it now I'll just save this from here and under that we just need some kind of white spaces which will be sized box and inside the sized box I will be just providing 16 white spaces to it which will be 16.2 oh and under that now we just need to provide the subtitle also to show her title um, into that so for that we just need to use our um, reusable subtitle which we have created at the initial of our videos so yeah now what uh, we need to provide so we will be just providing this subtitle which will be getting uh, dynamically so yeah we will be just providing that and now we just need to provide some kind of um, font weight to it so for that we'll be just using the font weight and the font weight will be um some w60 so yeah i will be just um providing that and yeah we can just um, adjust them later on but we will be just checking them on the screen first so how it looks how it is looking so we will be just uh adjusting them uh the sizes the font weight and the color um, later on so yeah we will be just moving ahead i will be just copying this again size box here under the subtitle we also need some kind of spaces um, and then we just need to show the header basically so yeah now i will be just uh, using the row widget under this subtitle so yeah row requires the children as you know um, now i will be just using the visibility so uh, if it is not uh, a header so we will be just using and that uh, a boolean to check if it is an error or not to just show it on the screen or to do not show it on the screen so for that i will be just using this visibility and inside that i will be just uh, first uh, using that boolean and the visible uh, property of this visibility class and i'll be just using if it is not true is error and now we will be just using the button simply so here we will be just getting text button as simple as that so it will be a flat button um a text button simply so which will be text button and inside that we will be just getting this on press function for this button so here i will be just using this and i will be just uh, simply popping uh, or just exiting that dialog box uh, when it is clicked so yeah which will be navigator dot pop and it requires the context and great now that's it so what was that so why just this child button child button and great so now we just need to define this child also now we will be just adding our this sub um, subtitle so for that we will be just doing that so which will be the subtitle and now we just need to define the label which will be cancel for hers and i will also define the color which will be colors dot green and that's it now i'll just add a cons keyword here to remove the warnings and i'll just save this so now we also just need to define uh, another button to just show okay on the there on the dialog box so for that we will be just adding the text button here uh another text button so it will just require to provide the on tab functionality also so we will be just uh, tickling that so now in this function we will be just providing our that function which we have just created on the top and that's it we will be just 
uh, providing that and inside this children uh, child part we will be just using the subtitle text widget to show the label okay on the screen so i will be just using the cons keyword which will be subtitle uh, text widget and the label will be okay and now i'll just provide a color to it which will be color colors dot red and yeah now i'll just save this again and now what else we just need to uh, provide so yeah there's it we are done by creating this uh, method which will be just showing the warnings or the errors for our application and we will be just using it um, in multiple screens so this is now a reusable uh, widget or a function so yeah now i will be just cutting this from here and we will be just setting some kind of design and styling when we just um, get it or, or see it on the screen so yeah now we will be just moving ahead which will be uh, we will be just creating or designing our login screen so first we will be just moving to our screens and inside the screens we will just be creating a new directory which will be auth so you you need to just create a new directory in the name of auth and after that you just need to create a new dart file and just name it login.dart so yeah here inside this so we will be just creating a stateful widget which will be a stateful widget and i will just name it login screen which will be login screen and now i will just show this screen login screen into my this emulator to see what we are just designing for that i will be just moving to my main dot dart and now in place of uh, this root screen now i will just provide the login screen so it will be just shown on our this emulator and great now we are just getting the placeholder so now we will be just starting our um, designing page so here we will be just replacing our this replace holder with the scaffold widget so we will be just designing it inside this scaffold so now we just need to use the body part which will be the column so we will be just using a column as usual and it requires a children hand inside the children part we will be just giving it some kind of um, here application name so we will be just designing it and you can just design your login screen whatever you prefer whatever design you like you can you are just um, good to go whatever design you you just need to design if you design are uh, different from my screen so just you share it on the instagram linkedin or just tag me so let me know what you have designed there so yeah i will be just adding the hip name on the top for me i will be just calling the hip name widget which we have just created or uh, um, the reusable widget for our application name so i will be just calling that which was hip name text widget and i will just provide some kind of font size to it which will be 30 for my uh, case and yeah we have just got that so now i just need to um, give some kind of a spacings on the top so for that i will be just using a um, sized box here so for that we will just need to provide um, a sized box so i will be just giving its height um, 60.0 and here the comma and let's see how it looks great now i just need some kind of paddings also here mm, so i will just wrap my this um, column widget with the padding widget which will be this and great i'll just save this and in the upcoming and the next part we will be just making this scrollable so i will be just uh, doing it now so we can just uh, who will take that overflow issue so i will be just doing it now to just make this 
um, screen scrollable so for that I will be just wrapping my this column widget with the single uh, child scroll view which will be single child scroll view and that's it it's done now we are just done and made our this page scrollable so great now I'll just cut this course from here and I'll just provide it here as simple as that so let it be as it is so now I will just be moving ahead which will be const and I will just copy this size box again and I'll just provide it here under that so I will just reduce the size and now I just need 16 and now I will be just adding a welcome message to uh, this home page so for that we just need to use our title text which was title text widget and I'll just name it uh, use the label and I'll be just giving it welcome back and I will just save this and we just need to give it some kind of alignment so for that I will be just wrapping my this uh, widget with the align widget to just make it uh, or give it some kind of alignments to it so I'll be just wrapping it with the widget which is align yeah align great yeah this so now I'll just save this no so that let me just correct this so here i'll be just using the alignment property of it and now we just need to make it center left so i will be just doing that i'll be just using the alignment and the center left and i'll just save this and great now we are done uh, so i'll just save this again which will be this a const keyword here so yeah we are just getting the warning so we will be just uh, solving them out but uh, first we will be just designing our this page yeah now I will just copy this again this size box so we just required some kind of a spaces again so yeah I'll just copy this and I'll just paste this here so now here we are done by now but now we just need to use some kind of um forms here so just uh, allow the user to log in into our this application so for that we will be just uh, using some kind of validations and all so for that we will be just using it will be you uh, much 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 quicker uh, we should use a form so it will be easier to put some kind of validations on there to use the key so for that i will be just moving and using a form here which will be form and inside the form now we just need to design our text form fields so for that i will be just doing that so inside this child now we just need to uh, use two two text form field for that we just need to use one for email and other for password and the uh, next we just need a button here so it will be a column basically so i'll be just using the column widget column widget so i'll just save this while we are getting not getting any suggestions so here i will be just using the column widget and inside the column as you know that we are just need to use the children property of this uh we just need a list here uh, to provide inside the children so i will be just using the text form field uh, which will be text form field and yeah i'll just save this and we will be just getting the text form field here great now we just needed that so i will be just decorating this a bit uh, but for that we just need to use to provide some kind of controllers and focus node to it so we focus node for we just click outside of this text prompt field so this should be unfocused so for that we just need to create some kind of controllers and the focus node and we will be just creating it on the top of our this um login screen page so first we just need to go to the top so here i will be just creating some kind of final fields which will be text editing and we will be just creating some kind of controllers text editing controller and i'll just name it email 
controller one for email controller and the other one uh for the password controller so i'll just paste it under that and i'll just rename this to the password controller and done so now we just also need to hunt focus on these two text form field when user clicks outside of the text form field so we just need to also create focus dot uh variable so that will be let final and the type will be focus uh, node and i will be just creating email focus node and i will be just copying this and pasting this and i will be just creating one for uh, password two and great it's done now i'll just save this and we also just need to create a global key of type form state to just uh, provide that key into our form so i will be just creating that which will be late final and it the name will be form key which will be form key yeah great now i will be just using the global key and i will be just using it uh, form state which will be form state and that's it so we will see what we are just getting so we will be just fixing this so, so we will be just using the global key yeah great now we are done so we will be just also creating uh, boolean variable to just obscure the text the password field when the high icon is clicked so it will be just obscure or the text the password text field uh, whatever the there are some kind of text it should be hide or uh, or to be shown so we will be just defining that and we will be just doing that with the help of this boolean so i'll be just creating a boolean variable which will be bool obscure text and i'll just make it to true initially and we will be just um, controlling that so true t r u he great now i will be just going back and now we just need to initialize these at the initial when the login page is clicked or the login page is shown on the screen so we just need to uh, initialize all these late uh, variables first so what we will be just doing we will be just initializing them in our init state so very initial when this page starts we just uh, the initial or init state will initialize them so we will be just using the init state here and we will be just initializing all of them so great now I will be just doing that which will be uh, this email controller is equal to text editing controller done and i will be just doing the same for the password controller initializing it and i will be just doing the same thing for the focus node i will be just using the focus uh, nodes and i will be just initializing them which will be focus node here and is equal to focus node done i'll just copy paste this and great now it is done so when we we just initialize them so we also need to uh dispose them when it uh, the task is completed so for that we will be just disposing them also we will be just using the dispose to just remove them from the memory to just uh, make our application smooth and it will just work smoothly so yeah now we will be just exposing them also which will be email controller dot dispose and the same we will be just using the password controller dot dispose and for the same method we will be just using for the focus nodes also which will be focus nodes uh great now we will be just using the email focused uh, dot dispose and the password focus node dot dispose and we, we are done by disposing them also great now we will be just moving uh, uh ahead and now we will be just creating however the simple function when uh, to check some kind of 
validations when the button is clicked so the we just need to um, use that function so i will be just creating a future function here under that and dispose method so here we will be just using the future and the type will be the void and i will be just naming it login function and this time as you know that it is a future function so we just need to provide it a sync keyword uh, great now i will be just using the final is valid so if it is valid so the form uh, we will be just using the form key dot current state uh, dot validate to just validate it so we just need to use the null safety check here um, to we make sure that it is not null and we will be just focusing out so unfocusing it when the button is clicked so for that we will be just using the focus scope which is this uh, dot of context and the then we will be just unfocusing this um, great so now we will be just checking if it is valid is valid and now we will be just performing some kind of actions yeah great now we will be just uh, wrapping our this um, scaffold widget to just um, provide some kind of on tip functions when uh, this uh, is outside of this um, text form field is clicked on this scaffold so it means that uh, this field should be unfocused so yeah for that i will be just uh, wrapping my this scaffold widget with the gesture detector to just provide the on tip functionality to us so we will be just performing some kind of actions when the uh, the scaffold is clicked great now here i will be just unfocusing this which will be focus scope dot of context and now i will be just unfocusing this great i just save this and now when i just click here and now when i just click here so the that is unfocused so great now it is working so i will be just moving ahead here i will be just adding the cons keyword and it will just remove the warnings again for me and now we will be just uh, decorating our this um, text form field so yeah now we will be just doing that so now we just need to provide the controller to it for the controller it is the email um, text form field so i will be just providing that email controller great now here we just need to provide the focus node also so the focus node will be email focused and now we just need to uh, provide the text input action so i will be just providing that to which will be text input action which will be text input action dot next so when the next is click so it will be just moving to the next and i will be providing a text input action dot next great so now we just need to provide the keyboard type so when it is uh, user is typing some kind of email so at the rate uh, should be shown on the keyboard to user will be uh, easily accessing that at the right sign so yeah we will be just providing the keyboard keyboard type to email which will be text input dot email so yeah now when i just save this and we are just getting that email controller some kind of error so i will just or restart this from here so we have just initialized them um, but we have not or restarted our old application so yeah we are done now when i just click this here so here you are just getting the at the red sign for this text form field mm, and yeah next we just need to provide uh, some kind of icons and the end so for that we will be just using the decoration field 
and now we just need to use the input decoration and as you know that it is giving some kind of warnings we will be just using the const keyword and now we just need to provide the int text and here i will just add it email address done now we just need to provide some kind of icons to it so for that we just uh, we want to add an icon here so for that it will be the prefix icon and i will be just providing it which will be icon and now we will be just using the icon light so i will be just iconly sorry iconly light and now we just need to import this so for that i will be just importing our this package and now we will be just using the message icon to be shown here so that's great now i'll just save this and we will be just getting an icon here yeah we just got an end and the icon uh, which is looking good so we also just need to uh, validate this email address so i will be just using the validator um, and we just require to give it some kind of value so i will be just returning this and now i will be just returning my validator and i will be just using the function email validator and what value should be va validate so i will be just providing this value whatever value we will be just getting we will be just validating it so yeah i have already created my validators here so here i am just doing nothing i have created a new class in the name of my validator and here i have just created a function which will be display name validator and it is taking a string and now i am just checking if display name is null or display name is empty so just uh, show display name cannot be empty uh, basically it's just showing a warning for the errors so here also i have just added some kind of conditions for display name length is less than three or it is greater than 20 so just show that message and what i am doing in this email validator so if it is in text is empty basically this field is empty when the button is clicked uh, login button is basically clicked so it will just show this um, message please enter in email and the other check is this we are just using our regular expression to just uh, validate this user is typing it is an email or valid email or not so we are just doing that if it is not a valid email so we will just return this error and the same thing we are just doing with the password validator if it is empty it will just show an empty message and if it is less than six it will just show a message so if the repeat password validator does not match it will just show that the password do not match and yeah i have done this but uh, i'm using this into our this um, form and great we will be just moving ahead so you will be just creating that by yourself great now here when just we will be also creating our new function um, and using the new property which will be on field submitted when this field is submitted so we will be just um, doing some kind of um, actions on that so yeah we will be just unfocusing uh, using the focus scope which will be focus uh, scope dot of context and great now i will be just using the request focus and i will be just uh, providing in the request focus which will be hmm, uh, the next focus should be the password focus node and i will be just providing that pa password focus node and that's it mm, when this field is uh, on this field this button is clicked so we will be just uh, moving to our next text form field simply uh, we are doing that so yeah we will be just uh, pro we are done by just 
um, this email text form field and now I will be just copying this whole section from here text form field and I will be just uh pasting this under there and i'll just save this and we will be just getting another text form field here so great we just need to um, give some kind of spaces here so for that i will be just using the sized box here uh, which will be height 16.0 and i'll just save this again and now we are just getting that um, required spaces between them so now I will be just quickly changing these with the password controller and the password focus node. Great. Now we just need to uh, do not need to perform any kind of action when the next button is clicked. So we just don't need the next one. So it will be a simple visible password type of keyboard. And that's it. I'll just save this and here on the hand text, I'll just provide it um password for the i will be just providing this kind of things and create i'll just save this and now other thing on this um the password field we will be just using the hop secure to just hide and show the text on that so we will be just using our boolean which was the obscure text and on the basis of that we will be just uh visibling and disabling our this text so yeah now we will be just using the lock and great it is changed so now we just need uh, to show some kind of icon here on the password text form field so for that we will be just using the supex icon and inside the supex icon i will be just using the icon and icon lee dot light so yeah i will be just using the standard one for us so which will be visibility and yeah we will check this uh, visibility or the basis of that boolean which we have just created so for that we will be just doing that um i will be just entering this from here and for the condition i will be just using the hop secure text if it is uh, true then show the icon um, this icon which will be basically the visibility and else we will be just showing the icon which will be icons dot visibility of great now we are just getting that error so there is a constant we have just used here so i'll just remove that now great now i'll just add the const here and i'll set this and that's it now we are just getting that button but now we will be just implementing uh, this button for now so yeah i will be just going back to the horn pressed function of this button so where it is so yeah now i will be just cutting this from here and now we will be just using a button here so I'll make it wet, which will be this. So yeah, I will just cut it from here and now I will be just using the icon button. So which will just give us uh, the functionality for the on pressed function. So we will be just defining that, but uh, we will just add that icon here, which was this and again i'll just save this and we will be just getting the same result as we were getting um now i will be just going and defining the horn press functionality for this so the horn flex functionality we will be just uh, changing the state on the runtime so we will be just doing that by using our set state so we will just um use a set state when this button um is clicked so the screen will be rebuilt or the screen will be refreshed on the basis of that so i'll be just using the hop secure text uh, is equal to not hop secure text so basically it will always be the opposite when this button is clicked so it will always be 
when it is true when the button is clicked so it is false when it is false the button is clicked so it will be just true so yeah i will be just using the op secure text so great um, and we are just using the same controller i guess so we are passing this and i'll just change the controller for my this password controller now they are different but so let's just check the validator and now this time we will be just validating the password so we will be just using the password validator here and now what function we will be just getting for this so we will be just calling the login function so i'll just cut this now we don't need to uh, go to the next one so for this when the button is clicked so we will be just submitting this so we will be just calling the login function so great i'll just save this and now i will just auto restart this so what we are just getting the error uh, it might be solved so so let's just check this so i'll just type something here so i don't know i will just click this now it is visible now when i click this again so it is now hidden in the in place of this asterisk so great it is working so far now we just need to add the uh, forget password button so for that we will just be giving some kind of spaces between um here under this so i will be just copying this sized box from here and i will just paste it under that so yeah now i will be just using um our subtitle text so but uh, this button should be the a clickable button so we will be just using the text button for that yeah now i'll just use the text button we will be just getting this on first function for this and i'll be just implementing that but before we will be just using our subtitle text so yeah it was the subtitles where it is subtitle text widget and there you have it we will be just using the label and the label will be forgot password password yeah i'll just use the cons keyword to remove the warnings from here i'll just save this and now we will be just getting that so now we just need to align this so for that we will just uh, wrap our this text button with the alignment widget so i'll be just doing that so i'll just wrap this widget with the align and i'll be just using the alignment property of this now i will be just um, aligning it center right alignment dot center so it will be right now i'll just save this and that's it great now it just shipped it to its position where it should be so now i'll just need to uh, underline this so we will be just um doing that and i will be just formatting it italic so for that we just need to um style this a bit so for that we just need to use the text decoration for this and the text decoration dot underline which will be text decoration dot underline and that's it now i'll just save this again and now i'll just make this um italic so for that we just need to use the font style for that and the font style will be italic great now i'll just save this great now we are just getting this and it is also clickable so we will be just implementing these functionalities later on but for now let it be empty so i'll be just moving ahead from here and now we will be just adding a button uh, for the login so for that we will be just using and giving some kind of spaces here first so for that i'll just uh, added that and i'll just save this and now 
we will be just using a sized box again and inside the sized box we will be just um, using a button so for that i'll be just defining the width for that which will be double dot infinity so it will just take all the available spaces spaces so in the child part now we will be just using the elevated uh, button for that so it will basically be the elevated button dot icon so for that we just can be able to add an icon into the elevated button so yeah now we will be just um, providing that but before that i will be just so yeah now we will be just providing the icon so icon will be the login icon icon icons dot login and now we will be just naming it uh labeling it as login so yeah this label requires a widget so we will provide it a text widget which will be text and now it will be login sorry Log login and we just need to add a const keyword here and here also so i'll just save this and now we will be just getting that button so yeah we have just got it now we just need to make the corner around it um and we just need to put something um, styling something into it so for that we just need to use the style um style property of this so we will be just doing that which will be a style and now we just need to use the elevated button style from to style it elevated button dot from style yeah style from and that's it now we will be just doing that uh, first we just need to give it some kind of paddings to it so we will be just giving that so hand uh, dot all and i'll just give it 12 for now and we also just need to give it some kind of border radius so for that we just need to use the shape property of that and the rounded rectangle border which will be rounded rectangle border and inside that the, we will be just using the property which is border radius and border radius dot circular which will be border radius circular and i'll just provide it 10 and now i will just save this so let's see what will happen great now it is looking good basically so we just need to um, increase the font side or font size of this login so for that i will be just going to this login and i'll just style and this text style which will be text style and i'll be just increasing the font size for this i'll just make it 20 and i'll just save this great now it is looking great now i will be just um triggering the function when this button is clicked the function will be login function and this will be hasync so it is a future function so it will be hasync uh, we will be just using the async keyword great now i will be just using and heading the button um, for the google login so sign in with the google so i'll be just adding that but uh, before that we will be just um, uh, giving some kind of spaces here also so for that we just need to provide the this size box which will be 16 and i'll just save this and again we will be just using our that subtitle which will be subtitle and now i will be just labeling it with a uh, whole connect using so i'll just make it upper case so i'll be just using the two oh sorry uppercase to uppercase 
and now I'll just save this and let's see what we will be just getting here great now we are getting this now I will be just adding um, the button for us which will be we will be just using uh, the size box again for this and I'll just save this and again we will be just calling um, and using a size book to show the button for the Google sign in so I'll be just using this size box and um, I'll be just giving it a height to it so for that we will be just using the bottom navigation bar height which will be this K bottom navigation bar height and I will just add a 10 to it so we will be just now using her row for that so I'll be just using the child part of our size box and the child part we will be just using the row widget um and inside this row we just be using the children property of it sorry children and inside that now we will be just simply using the expanded widget so it will just take all the um, spaces for us so for that we will be just using that expanded widget so expanded widget and we under this we will be just um, uh, in the child part we will be just using the size box again and in the size box we will be just showing the simple google button for sign in purpose so in the size box we will be just defining the height again here which will be height and we will be just using the k bottom navigation bar height again which is a default one and that's it now in uh, in the child section now we will be just calling our button so we will be just using the google button so we will we need to just create this but for that we have not created that yet so i will be just doing creating that um in a second so to create this google button widget so i will be just moving to my this widget section and now in the widget section i'll be just creating a new folder and i'll name it auth and how now i will be just creating a new file which will be google button dot dart and now here i will be just creating a uh, reusable button for us which will be um has stateless widgets basically so i will be just creating that stateless widget here and now i just name it google button yeah now i will be just changing this placeholder um, with the elevated button so which will be elevated button so yeah we will be just using the elevated button dot icon so for that i will be just using the elevated button dot icon so here we can be just getting the on press function for that and uh, we can be able to use an icon for this so for the icon we will be just adding a new package so we will be just getting the uh, google icon from there so i have already installed an pa uh, package uh, which is ion icon so you can just get it uh, from the pub.dev so you just install this and you will be just able to uh, use the google icon so yeah you can just uh, add this name uh, to the terminal platter for head and higher in icons so it will be just installed for you so for me i have already installed this so yeah now i will be just using this so for that i will be just calling the icons which will be icons so now i will be just using our function which was hi o n icon icon so here now we will be just getting the logo um the google logo basically so i'll be just calling that so we just need to import it first so i'll be just importing this package um and yeah now we have just got that i'll be just using the const keyword and now i'll just give it a label to it
so what will be the label which will be the sign and so the label requires the widget so we will be just providing it which will be the text and now inside this now we will be just providing that so yeah i'll be just using the cons keyword here great now i'll just save this and we will just get that so basically we have not imported this yet so i will be just importing this now i'll just save this so yeah we have just got that mm, great so so now i will be just going back to my this and i will be just styling it and i'll be just providing some kind of border radius to it so for that now we will just need to use the style property of it and for the styling so we just need to use the elevated button dot style uh, from style and inside that now we just need to define some kind of paddings to it so for the padding so we will be just keeping it uh, padding from the whole side so i'll be just keeping providing it 12 for now and yeah be using the course keyword again to just remove the warnings and now we just need to use the background color um it should be white so i'll just provide it colors dot white and again now we just need to use the shape to just make it border uh provided some kind of radius to the border so for that i'll be just using the rounded um, shape border and the border radius and this time the border radius dot circular and i'll provide it 10 so let's just see how it how it will look so great i'll just save this again now we are just getting that so for now i'll be just commenting this white background color for this button so yeah we will be just tickling this out uh later on but now i'll be just moving again to my this login login button screen so login page screen so here i'll be just using the course keyword so yeah what we are just getting so for that i'll just remove this and i'll be just using the course keyword for my this sized box great now i'll be just um, implementing the other parts for now so for that we will be just um, moving ahead so for the row now i'll be just using the main axis alignment to space around which will be main axis alignment dot space around and great now i will be just using Mm, some kind of flex for this expanded widget so it will just i will just give it um two to just use it two percent of the screen so i'll be just doing that and now um i will be just wrapping this uh google button with the fitted box so it will be just um responsive so for that so uh, we just need to provide a fitted box to it which will be fitted box and now it will be just uh, be responsive for every screen so great so yeah now i will be just coming out from there and now we just need to use uh, the a sized box again in this row so this time we will be just giving it the width which will be width and i'll just save this so i just need to provide it eight for now so i will be just adding some kind of um, uh, the guest button um, this side so for that we just need to use the button also to uh, show the button so for that we just need to provide it um sized box here uh, which will be sized box great now we just need to use the height and provide some kind of heights into it and the height will be k bottom height and the child part we will be just providing the elevated button so which will be elevated button and it will just provide us the one face function 
and now for that now we will be just uh, using the child pr property of this and now we will be just using her text widget here which will be text and I'll just provide it guest so we are just getting that error I don't know why but we will check this um, we will be just checking this so so we are just getting this uh, error because we have added a cost keyword um, here on this sized box so I will be just changing it so for that I'll just use the cons keyword and save this so we are just getting that so but we will be just uh, wrapping this um, widget with the expanded widget great now that's it I'll just save this and get it. now it is getting the size what it requires so we will be just uh, increasing the font size which will be a style and the text style and font size will be 20 so now we just need to give it some kind of stylings and we just need to make this border radius and provide some kind of border radius so I'll be just going back here and I'll just cut this style from here which will be this basically so I'll be just checking so yeah I'll just cut the uh, copy this style from here and I'll just paste it here on this elevated button great now I'll just save this so comma and yeah done now we will be just getting the border radius for this button too and great now I'll just be adding the cost keyword here and the cons keyword here to remove the warnings so yeah now we will be just uh, going to have our registration page so but the login page and the registration page will be the same but for the registration page we will just need to add one more um, this uh, text form field to repeat or the confirm password so yeah or the rest of the code will be the same so i have already uh, created my this uh, registration page so basically both of them are same you just need to copy this login uh, code and paste it for registered dot and here we just added uh, the confirm password and the confirm password uh, focus node for that so the rest of the code will be the same and it will just function and same so the design will also be the same and the um, here in the column part we have just added a welcome message and your welcome message here so for that you just need to add them so again we have just used the text form field here so for that we have validated and display name validator to just validate that um and the other hand we just mm, also added a form for that which was this um, email controller and the other password controller um, and the confirm password controller and the rest of the code will be the same so yeah just copy and paste that and you will be just doing good and there you have it we have covered a lot in this segment from the viewed recently screen to error dialogues and enhanced login screen a sign in with google button and a sleek registration screen if you found this session helpful or have any question drop a comment below stay tuned for more exciting flutter tutorials until then stay happy stay fit and as usual happy fluttering